welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. What's going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. I'm one of your co-hosts, Chris Bixby, and with me today is our host, Jake Deffenbaugh. How are you, Jake? Hello, doing great, Chris. How about you? Doing well. And our other co-host, uh, Matt Bingle, wanted to be here, but due to a personal matter, he is not able to attend the interview today. But in his place, we have one of our good friends. Uh, you may he was a he's a previous guest of ours, and he also hosts the very successful long-running podcast, the DJ Bob Show. Please welcome, as a guest co-host, the legendary DJ Bob Runkle. Hello, friends. Yes. How are you? Yes. You're doing great, Bob. So glad, you? To, so glad to hop in on this chat today. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So for today's guest, he is a uh, he's an actor. He's a voice actor. A lot of you may know him as a voice of Ed on the Cartoon Network series Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Um, he also worked on projects such as Captain and the Game Master, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Mm-hmm. And we're here to talk about those and some other things he's done as well. And here he is, Matt Hill. Matt, happy to have you here. Oh, gentlemen, it's an honor to be here. And, uh, you know, like obviously friends of uh, Noel, you know, my turtle bro from Turtles uh, and Bob as well. It's, uh, you know, thanks for having me on, fellas. It's an honor. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. And thank you for sharing a lot of your Ed life with me as well when you guys were little chickens growing up. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. So even though I kind of introduced you a bit, can you kind of like uh, to our audience introduce yourself and like what you do? What do I do? I make um, I do these things called the voices that, you know, come from inside my my head, which are multiple. Um, And then uh, I get hired to play these voices in a studio. Uh, And, uh, you know, like you just said, said perfectly everywhere from starting it all off with Captain Nintendo like a billion years ago. Um, which kind of blew the lid off voiceover for me, you know, and, and like this amazing world of cartoons and animation and, you know, uh, and then the film and TV career that I've um, been blessed to have as well, you know, being one of the turtles was, you know, one of the, one of the coolest things to be a part of as well, you know, and, um, right. you know, mm-hmm. and then this, like, I can't believe, honestly, it's been like 33 years, you know, it's just like, wow. where did the time go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's like, wow. You know? But yeah, yep. When you're 13 and you go, Hey, your life's half over. I need to make my career happen. Don't know why at 13, I thought my life was half over. Um, but it lit a fire underneath my proverbial, you know, my butt to go, okay, I got to make this dream happen. So, um, it, it kind of all started then. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So what was your background like and how did you grow up? How did I grow up? Yeah. In the river down, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> in a small town, um, just actually on the U.S. Canadian border, uh, called Tawasson, and uh, uh, it's kind of where my early trappings of wanting to be an actor um, and performer was like. And this is how old I am, guys. I watched a show called Donnie Marie Osmond, which was like, ah, uh, yes, of you course. know them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and and then all these other bands that my older brothers would listen to, um, that I, you know, like Zeppelin and the Stones and. And all that, it, it was like, it was the perfect combination for me to have a life performing, uh, you know, and being in movies and TV. And for some reason, I knew that America was like literally across the fence from where we lived in Tawasson. Um, It's a small border town called uh, Point Roberts. And uh, so, you know, their, those literally dreams were just set going like, I'm going to Hollywood. I don't know how, I don't know when, but it's going to happen, you know, and uh um, I, like I say, I can't believe 33 years has gone by so fast, but, you know, some of the most incredible experiences I've been able to have, you know, being alive and, um, you know, sharing it with amazing people who, who enjoy the work, you know? Mm. Um, and, you know, I mean, I never thought being one of the turtles would still be giving gifts to this day with fans, you know, asking for autographs or going to a convention or, you know, being say like that connected with, with our brother, Noel. Right. Who, as you know, like is such a superstar, you know, on that oh, side yeah. of things. 
Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's amazing, right? It's like all these relationships that we get to build, you know, doing this thing called work, right? You know, yeah. um, it's, uh, mm -hmm. that's what blows my mind. And they bring in lunch every day, too. So it's pretty good. <laughs> and, you get, and you get a paycheck at the end of the day. And we get a pretty sweet paycheck. It's very, very true. Uh, yeah. And it also, too, just to keep it all humble and real, it also allows for inspiration when you need to rebuild things. When you need to rebrand things, when, you know, on a long career, say like mine, I guess, you kind of have a few years where it's a bit of a pause as well, right? You know, it allows right. you to reflect, do other things, but at the same time, then, you know, just as you think it's over, it's like you're busier than you've ever been, right? So, you know, the proverbial, right. you know, book a, a, what is it like, book a trip and you'll get a gig. So, you know, yeah. so I try to book lots of trips. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely. So, like, so you talked about your sort of pop culture influence he's growing up, but how did watching those things and watching those films transition into you acting and doing the arts for yourself? Yeah, that's a good question, Bob. It's like, you know, like I was saying, it's it was these early influences for me in, um, you know, watching people of my day being you know like performers right like you know watching the bands you know i like i wanted to be in a rock and roll band so you know when i got old enough i you know i mean i i wasn't a great singer but i could sing right and i you know i loved hearing my own voice so that was another step forward um so when my life in you know say like film and tv and animation um i was sort of already ready to performing and um and so instead of being shy about it, I actually ate it up and I, you know, and then, you know, the first time you hear people clapping for you, it's, it's like, you know, it's just such a game changer, right? Cause you just go like, Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Like I the greatest feeling God. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh. so I kind of had these, a lot of these confirmation moments where, like I said, at 13, I made the bold jump um, to then say, yeah, I wanted to be an actor um, starting here in Vancouver um, because it was like, you know, the film and TV and voiceover industry were starting to really come on and a lot of U.S. Um, productions were coming up to Canada. Um, so, you know, it was like that same thing, like when I was really young going like, hey, I have no idea how I'm going to work in the States, but it's going to happen somehow, somewhere. And, uh, you know, dream meet the destiny and book my first gig after my first course that I, you know, took to be an actor. And, and I sucked. I was I was not very good. Uh, so thankfully I got a little bit better over the years, you know? Um, but like my agent said, she's like, you have zero training. You have not a lot of talent only because no, not a lot of talent. She didn't say that. That's not true. She said, you have a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and that's going to take you very far because you have talent that needs to be now, you know, like flushed out. Right. So as she said, she's like, Okay, I'll take a chance on you. I'll take you in on my agency, uh, but you got to take a course so you don't let me down taking a chance on you, right? So right. Um, I was so grateful, right? Because she saw this spark of confidence that I had, but was smart enough to say, okay, I'm going to, you know, stake my reputation as an agent on you. You can't let me down. So, you know, so I took a course and, you know, uh, like I say, few weeks later, I, I got my first official part playing Santa's lead elf at the Christmas display downtown. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, it was awesome. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's really awesome. Cool. <laughs> so now with voiceover, did you have like any favorite cartoons to watch growing up? Yeah, I really liked um, uh Well, that's probably, I don't know if you guys would ever watched it. It was a TV series um, called the Partridge Family. Oh, oh yeah, were, yeah. Okay, so yeah, like the, those guys, I loved that sort of like the live action. Um, I mean, I know there was no um, animation in that one, but I mean, I watched a lot of shows like that. Um, I I remember watching, uh, what was it, Mighty Mouse? I liked oh, that because yeah. you know, I was little and I had a lot of energy. So I was just like, I want to be like that guy. And it was interesting, around that time, there were things like Jokey and the Pussy Cat and all those things yeah. were, where rock yeah. bands were such a big part of the. Yeah. But culture yeah. too. So that makes sense. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. You, yeah, you know, you're right, Bob. It was like, um, you know, watching, um, well, like I say, yeah, that, I mean, that cartoon, definitely Josie and the Pussycats. Um, you know, 
Captain Planet, that kind of got me. Which oh, I like, love Captain Planet. Right? Even you like know, Scooby, it, Scooby Doo went for life, you too. What's that? And Scooby Doo too, with him yeah. like, with like Casey Kasem doing yeah. like that, like mm-hmm. kept crossing oh, yeah. over there. I know. Yeah, it's a crazy, it's amazing world, right? It's like you know, like mm-hmm. little did I know that then getting hired on Ninja Turtles, I would be say working with Noel, who I was like a true fan when he's like. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've done a few, you know, I've played, you know, the big blue, the purple gun, what, uh, what was it, He when he was supple up, guess, for a bit, right? And, uh, you know, and I'm like, oh my god! And then <laughs> years late, a couple years after you do Turtles, he got better. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. You know, it's like, it was crazy, you know? Which so, was like a huge yeah. success, like, all over yeah. the world. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep, and the coolest, coolest dude I've ever met in my life, like, it was just, you know, like, I mean, and all the actors loved their puppeteers, but my, you know, Noel to me is the best, the best there ever was, you know? So, it's, oh, yeah. It's, uh, really um, great you, guy. Well, yes. you create this brotherhood, right? It's like you guys doing your podcast with them. It's the same thing. It's, you know, you guys reaching out to people and then, you know, asking great and questions. And we all, we all met essentially through Noel. I met Chris through Noel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think Chris, you were a fan of my podcast and found me through nowhere or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 Oh well, yeah. Can yeah. we you all know, got I... this weird connection? Ring. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if it goes horribly wrong, it's like it's your fault, Noel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean that's 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 probably been my favorite thing about this career is getting to essentially every gig is so different even though it's yes it's the same procedure to say go to a studio or go to you know a a film stage and you know and and film but it's still so different every single day right and Mm -hmm. you know and you get to meet so many incredible people that are also masters in their craft and you know people doing this thing called you know the film and tv and and voiceover industry it's just like blows my mind you know um like I don't know. Did you guys watch um Adam Sandler's? Um, he got the uh, the award for comedy last night on. Uh... I just saw that. I yeah, just... yeah, I did see that. Like, yeah, you know, it was like ah, oh, I mean, that's a guy. I wish I would have got hired on. I I actually read for Happy Gilmore. Um, oh for, wow. Yeah, to play his like um, whatever his goofy goofy, goofy looking um caddy was who that oh, yeah. guy was really fast. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know the guy with the blonde yeah curly hair. And, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, I read for Happy. I didn't get it, but it was still amazing to, you know, to like have that do my scene with, you know, with Adam and um and uh I think Carl Weathers was there too, because I think he was he was reading lines, whatever scene we were doing. But I just remember I was like, dude, you're on Saturday Night Live. Oh my God. And then I'm cheering him on on the TV last night. It's like, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So obviously there's one there there are many things that people know you for but many people mm-hmm. people our age know you as Ed on Ed and Ed, Ed and Eddie what was that audition <laughs> process like and to add to that did you ever expect it to be what it was when you got that call to oh for it? you know what I, in my honest of honest truths getting ed was like such a triumph only because we had never ever had like more than maybe three callbacks to get a gig ed ed and eddie set a new record not only for the amounts of callbacks we had to have that it was like into the i think we were like the eighth official callback and there were still like just groups of us coming in so we sort of knew maybe what character they were looking at us for um, because you know we get the sides right and um and then i think at, at one point there was like i could pick out there was like three considerations of ed me being one of them and then three for double d three for eddie and then three for the rest of the characters so the the room mm-hmm. the room was still really really full and um you know i could see the the producers and uh you know the director and creator just kind of getting like you know frustrated because he's like they're not getting it like like, you know, and we're all just, we're actors. We just want to score the gig, right? So that we can mm-hmm. put food on the table and also, you know, go ply our craft. And it was amazing because I was like on this eighth callback. I don't know what I, I don't know what I was thinking. Thank God I wasn't. But I was like, okay, 
what do they need? I have no idea what they want. And out of nowhere, I was like, and I, I like, I, you don't do this as an actor, right? It's like, yeah, I, I tapped on the microphone. So there was this yeah. loud, like, boom, boom. and then I was like, hey, right. The, you know, the engineer is like, what are you doing? Right. And I'm like, oh, oh, uh, excuse me, fellas. Uh, how do you get water from this thing here? And I pointed at the mic. Right. And I couldn't hear what was happening on the other side of the glass, except Danny, the creator was going like, what? Like, and then he's looking at the engineer. <laughs> what he was saying was, did you record that? Cause that's Ed. I thought it was the opposite going, get him out of there. He'll never work in this town again. Cause, cause I blew on the mic. Right. And uh, so he's like, play him the thing, play him the thing. And so, you know, the engineer's looking at me like, I'm going to kill you afterwards. Cause you know, you don't blow on the mic, but they played me this mistake uh, where I literally, you know, blew on the mic and said, Hey, how do you guys get water from this thing here? And, and, you know, Danny said, you keep doing that and you have Ed, that's him. You know, and so thank God they recorded that, you know, that little one liner mistake because it helped me, you know, get back to Ed in those first few episodes. Cause you know, cause you know, we were, we were all like in there trying to figure it out. And then Danny would just be like, you know, play him the thing. He's not getting it. He's not getting it. You know? And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'd listen to the take. Okay. You know? And then back to Ed. Right. Yeah. So it was, and, and little did I know that you guys, like, I know answer your question is like, I didn't think that like that show would end up becoming, you know, Cartoon Network's most rated show or whatever we became. Right. Like it was pretty right. popular. Oh, um, yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, so I feel really grateful to have been part of the cast because, you know, um, I think it it had, I think it still has its staying power because it was so pure in its, um, in the way that Danny and everybody put it together, you know, um, and, and it's, you know, no other episodes of shows have we ever had callback sessions um, that we always have for animation projects, at least, mm -hmm. um, you know, we like, we usually have like pickup sessions you know, because like a scene won't work or the lines, you know, it's too long or whatever. But we, we, I think maybe in eight seasons, we maybe had one or two pickup sessions where there was like a, you know, a technical flip, you know, fribbit or something, right? Wow. Um, but that's, an, again, a testament to Danny and the creative team, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he certainly, he wouldn't let the take go if we didn't get it, right? So right. sometimes it, it'd be like the most, you know, the most minute things where it would be like, you know, an Ed laugh, Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, you know, ha, 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 or whatever, right? And he's like, it's not Ed. And I'm like, what do you mean that's not Ed? It's still, you know, his laugh. He's like, it's not Ed, or it's not the intent of the scene, or whatever. And, you know, each episode, one of us would be, you know, we call it like the one where, you know, we'd be just thinking, like, oh, it's going so good today. And then <laughs> the whole train just slows down because, you know, because, you know, we didn't get past that one line because um, we had to get it right, you know. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. he got what he heard because he heard it in his head, and that's what—that's the brilliance of it, right? So you know, yeah, absolutely. So, oh, oh, to Ed and Nettie, thank you, fellas. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, everybody. Because uh, <laughs> what's a show that I like, same thing like say with the turtles, Ed? Like I get to do more cameos now, doing Ed to be able to say happy, sing happy birthday to people. You know, right, happy, yeah, birthday, uh, happy wedding, happy. Pretty much everything right to, to be able to um you know keep spreading this joy that you know um i feel so grateful that i was entrusted with this character to be able to play um yeah. you know so yeah so you know so thank you for hiring me fellas <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching the show absolutely so yes. now uh Sa now with uh samuel and tony and for those watching or listening uh samuel and tony were the voices of double d and eddie yeah. so uh, what was it like getting to uh work with them for the first time oh, horrible i hate those guys sorry <laughs> <laughs> did i just say that no those are i mean to get again um is that together that i almost said together and again at the same time to again um working with those guys and pretty much everybody um is always such a joy because we're all so happy to be working and doing our doing our job right um and so you know when you get together with a collection of creatives it's insanely fun like you know like like fits of laughter that sometimes last for 15 or 20 minutes until finally produce you know producers are going like 
hey, uh, guys, <laughs> you know, that last session is now on our time, right? And so, uh, but it's, to me, that's a testament to the work, right? And, and getting to know these incredible human beings, um, you know, and I mean, it's funny because I realized as we went on, I'm definitely a more, I'm more like, you know, single D. Sam is totally double D, like sort of in real life. He's, he's very, he's very precise. He's very, you know, he's so smart. You know, Eddie is like the, he's not even a, he's not a scammer. He's actually the opposite, but he's the smartest businessman um, where, you know, he pretty much now owns, I think the, the equipment company that basically services basically the entire um, oil patch up in Northern Alberta. <laughs> it's wow. uh yeah, you know, so we've all sort of found this route and it all kind of in many ways comes back to Ed, Ed and Eddie, <laughs> which I think is so brilliant. <laughs> That's know? awesome. Oh yeah. That's awesome. So do you have any uh, favorite episodes of Ed, Ed and Eddie? I'd say, I mean, Oh my God, there's so many. My favorite season is Christmas. So for mm. me, that Christmas special Christmas was special, like, yeah. Hands down, one of my favorite in the entire planet when just like the joy of Ed destroys the entire, you know, like infrastructure of the house because he's like putting up lights, <laughs> you know, and like, take, you know, putting up gravy cakes and milk for Santa and, you know, and just like all the all the calamity that ensued. Um, the kids, yeah, it was just awesome. I, I love and I love. I mean, God, there's so many. How many episodes did we do? Like, like 100 and. 78 or something you, you did a lot we did a lot yeah 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 you know i loved the i mean i loved a lot of the specials too like i loved the um uh the halloween special um you know but if you had if i had to pick like a favorite it's definitely the christmas one because that's uh that's my personal favorite because it's uh, also my my favorite um season of the year uh yeah i meant mine too yeah definitely yeah definitely. what about you bob he's like i love them all <laughs> I well, I'm a sucker for the Christmas one too because that's that's something I do every year. I have a list, like every day leading up to Christmas, I watch a special or a movie, and that's one of them. That's one of them. That's beautiful. It's because... like my vision of "It's a Wonderful Life." You know, it's just like that's my one of my favorite movies too. Yeah. yeah, I mean that and like the Rankin and Bash stuff, and it oh it just God. really affects the tone. Yeah, for... absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the Valentine's Day one's really fun too. Yeah, that's one of my uh, favorites. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's uh, I mean, there's just so many. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's uh, I mean, I could have, I mean, in one way, I think we've all could have like kept playing these characters for many, many more years because we because the joy was still there in doing the performing of the obviously of the show and the characters <clears throat> but i really respected you know the decision to to end it when they did right because you know mm -hmm. danny was brilliant because he said like hey you know we may as well go out when we're like you know sort of like still on the top area of things as opposed to like going you know two or three more seasons and things just go off the rails creatively yeah you like, don't want to do it just to do it yeah but that's right. the thing yeah, you know, I mean, for me personally, when we ended it, it was perfect timing because we were about to go on a on a big run around North America, um, called Run for One Planet, and so it was it was perfect because little did I know all these characters that I'd been you know fortunate to be a part of, like Raphael, and then and then soon to be understanding the the actual depth of um, how popular Ed really was with kids. Um, and school, you know, and in schools and stuff, because we we ended up speaking to like um, about 50,000 kids in all these different schools around our, our route around North America. And so I had a, like a literally a, um, um, a daily feedback loop of kids losing their mind in such a good way. You know, when I'd be like, hey, guys, do you want to save the planet with Ed and Sparkly Stephanie, who was my partner at the time? And, you know, and then I'd pull Raphael into the into the mix as well. Right. And, mm -hmm. and you could teach them anything because, you know, they're like, what? You were Ed? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, it, was, oh, it was amazing, you know. And, oh, my God. You changed my life because you're Raphael. And, you know, like teachers uh, coming up to me uh, crying because they were like, you know, for real, don't 
don't ever doubt that these characters have made such a big impact on on kids you know and yeah. big kids like, like this you know this mm -hmm. teacher that shared that with me right mm -hmm. so you know and I'm, I'm like it's funny i was just super grateful to just be working because as an actor that's the that's the greatest thing is getting a call from the agent saying you know you booked it right and you know and i'd be like sweet you know and so you know you get <laughs> you know you keep working and stuff so so then to then be having these instant, instant feedback loops of running into kids lives in their schools and communities was oh it was such a humbling experience you know um mm -hmm. you know, cuz they're all saying like thank you and i'm going like thank you <laughs> right that's uh you know it's like you guys now your generation right going you know we're putting a podcast together and then saying hey would you want to talk about stuff i'm like yeah <laughs> you know cuz um it's a it's the gift that keeps on giving fellas so thank you so much of course yeah my pleasure Honestly. absolutely Definitely. You're like answer better, answer faster. <laughs> oh, no, no, we love long winded. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yep. I never said that line, but but Sam once in a while would be like dance monkey, <laughs> like you know if we decide to keep doing tack, you know, <laughs> take after take. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you ever talk to Sam, you can ask him about that. You know. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We love, we love having. We love having multiple guests from the same property. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Have, have you guys ever reached yes. out to, to Sam? No? no. No. I've talked no. to Danny a couple times. Oh, have you? But, oh, awesome. Okay, great. But not for the pod, just for, for some of my stuff. But yeah. I'd love to have all you guys together on something. That'd be that awesome. would be. Oh, I know. Oh, me too. I mean, I would do like for real. I do like once a week. I do a podcast with those guys. Cause uh, you know, um, but you know, I also respect to Tony's like, dude, when I, you know, when I left the building, I left the building and you know, I think yeah, yeah. Um, we did, well, we did yeah. a podcast last year, actually. Was it the year before? And that was literally like, it was brilliant. And then Tony just like, was like, yo, one and done boys. It was so great to be together and stuff, but you know, and I'm like, what about this? And he's like, nope. Yeah, so. But maybe you never know. I mean, you know, didn't the Eagles get back together when they said health, you know, to, unless health rolls over? Yeah. I right? got that joke. Yeah. Yep. I know. Yeah. You know? Definitely. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I think if they did a reboot, it wouldn't be, it would never be the same. You know, like you couldn't, you yeah. Can't, you can't and just like sort of just yeah. I and mean, also demographic change in the yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I know Cartoon Network's demographic has definitely changed over time. Oh, is it? Gosh, yes. It's yeah. gotten it's gotten younger. Oh, has it? Yeah. yeah. To the yeah. point where, I'm sorry if I'm overshadowing the podcast, but to the <laughs> no, point, just... to the point where they're making a preschool block. For younger kids, and I'm like, whoa, this is wow. different. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess uh, whoever's crunching the numbers there, I guess go like, all right, boys and girls, here's where the demographic's going to be. Here's where we're gonna go. <laughs> you know, so, and it's, you know, like that. It's changing times and stuff. Yeah. Right? You know, it, and it all has like a 30 year cycle, anyhow. So, you know, mm -hmm. definitely. Like, as, as you guys know, the 80s are back in, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so besides your own, do you have a favorite uh, NNA character of Ed, mm -hmm. Ed Nettie? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm like, yes, I like, I like Ed. Yeah. Oh no, I really like. Uh, oh no, no, I like that. Oh yeah, I like Ed. Yeah. Uh, well, I really like. No, I'm just kidding. I like um, <laughs> every single one of them because they're everybody. Truly, was that's what I loved is that they like once we all like got hired and we kind of like got all the you know the, the the meat in the soup or whatever all the ingredients um everybody it's like peter on a consistently i would just like lose my brains because i'd be laughing so hard you know it's like um and then tony and sam and you know the canker sisters i'm like 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 may i just did a podcast with her and like you know like the snort and like the you know and then jimmy and and even plank he's my favorite <laughs> like, that's you know, awesome like, yeah 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 no, it's, you know 
So now, uh, in the, in the end, you uh, did the uh, TV movie at an Eddie's Big Picture show. What what was it like, kind of uh, recording that and you know basically wrapping up the show and working on it for the very last time? Yeah, it was interesting because I didn't really think about it till later. Um, you know, because like I said, it was um, personally it was good timing for me because I was like I said, I was literally weeks later I was taking off on a on a year for uh, our sorry on a run around North America for a year. Um, so my mind was split on making sure I, you know, did these last episodes of Ed, Ed and Eddie for the, you know, for the special. Um, but I definitely remember, um, you know, it was like that classic where like, remember at the end of, do you remember that movie or no, that TV series? Uh, oh, wow. What's her name? Carol Burnett. Remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Watch that? Where she's like, you know, she's at the end and she's by herself and there's, you know, they're just like sort of like dusting off the stage or whatever. I, I kind of had that moment at Coco Studios where we recorded it up here in Vancouver because like, you know, we'd all say goodbye to each other and, and, you know, and um we all knew it was over, but mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? But it was more like, it was a, it was more like, all right. Cause you know, the last session was just as intense as the first one, because, you know, you still had to give the energy and give the intensity of the characters and, you know, like, basically get it done um with that same energy that we had say from from day one um right. and and it's funny because I, I could tell that it was just as just as rich up there with the experience but i could feel that oh yeah i think it's i i don't think we are going to come back even though yeah i know they'd already they'd already told us we weren't going to but there's as an actor you always think like maybe maybe we'll come back right a little bit um but i i was i was actually happy that it didn't come back at least in that short term because i was heading out for a year so it was it was nostalgic and, and at the same moment as we were leaving the building you know i said goodbye to the guys and but it wasn't like this big you know sort of like it wasn't like a it wasn't a love it wasn't a love fest it wasn't, like well, it, a, it wasn't it wasn't right it was no different than when we say goodbye to each other because we always know it's like oh, okay well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks right? yeah so it was it was good in that way um but i definitely i, I had this sense of um sadness because i was like because i was standing at coco but i was by myself i was on this ledge that's that's kind of outside above the street or whatever and i was like wow you know, and I like literally like kind of did the Carol Burnett thing or whatever. And I, I looked back towards the studio where I just hugged everybody and said goodbye. Um, and then uh, and then I just like literally like looked forward because I needed to leave because for me, we were about to literally take off on this, you know, 11,000 mile run journey a few days later. So I had, I had my moment to say goodbye, but I was like, oh. Okay, I got a list, like a laundry list long of stuff to do till midnight in order to get ready to be, you know, off on this big journey. So maybe at the time I didn't really have time to, which I think is a good thing to kind of reflect on the fact that it really was over. Right? Right. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, I am kind of slow as well that um, I sometimes are, I'm slow to the party. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, everyone else was probably like, see you later, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on your run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, but you know, but if I could add, what there again is where I feel I was personally gifted by then going out on this journey around North America, very, like, you know, within the week to then have this instant feedback loop of all oh, you guys, the fans that were growing up with this show. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize what I was literally about to run into. And, and then the, you know, the, the beautiful um, energy of, of the thousands of fans that we met along the route, you know, um, Absolutely. It, it was such a difference, right? It was, uh, you know, it was such a um, surreal, uh, what's the word? Yeah, surreal, but in such a good way, um, a moment of confirmation that okay, it, was, valid, it was validating. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's uh, you know, and so especially on this journey of the run, um, it it was another confirmation as you were just saying that uh, that I'd made a good choice. You know, being 
an actor at 13 and and these characters then I'd be in, entrusted with to play um you know because then like that I started to bring Raphael into the presentations Ed was in the presentations you know I was one of the care bears at the time and so it was really neat to to, to have these three kind of classic characters be able to meet and speak to kids um especially in that way to share our message um which was a you know for a healthier planet right so Absolutely. it was uh, you know like that yes. it's like meeting you know um oh yeah it was wild it was wild <laughs> yes yeah absolutely <laughs> So, are you still in contact with anyone from and Andy? Um, well, I okay, just so it's on the record, fellas, I yeah. try to be in contact with everybody, but apparently they signed a like a non whatever something sort of paper thing or whatever. And every time I try to huh. say hi to them, a lawyer phones me going like, "Stop, just stop trying to get in touch with them." I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, um, no, I see these like I. Uh, anytime I can have a moment to connect with these guys, hundred percent. Anytime, it's uh me and Sam and Tony. We even went camping once. Um and uh, oh wow, I'll, I'll only share that that <laughs> yes, the three of our characters were definitely present on that camping trip. It was brilliant. <laughs> oh my god, like, uh, that's like, I'm laughing of the things going crazy. You know, Tony's like smoking up a storm. Can I say smoking? He was just smoking cigarettes today. But you know, and, and literally Sam's going like, ah, you guys stop making such a mess. Right? You know, <laughs> you're like, well, you're three Ed brothers together, right? So exactly, uh, yeah. You know, Oh, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And, you know, and of course we went to Sam's mom's house right over on the Island. So, you know, he was in charge of like keeping it nice and clean and, you know, the fact we stopped breaking things and, you know, so it was awesome. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Definitely. So awesome. now kind mm -hmm. of, uh, moving on from Ed and Eddie. So what was it like working on a uh, captain and the game master? Oh, captain. And my God, there's some, I actually heard an episode a few years ago and, um, I was so stoked to play Kevin because like, you know, for me, it was my only, um, what's it, my only connection point at that point was um, that it was a cartoon that was going to then show in America that was from, you know, Los Angeles. Right. And so it was again, another confirmation of, you know, me throwing my dreams out there at, in Point Roberts, you know, looking down towards the States from my hometown into Austin, right. Going, I'm going to be an actor. This is going to be great. Right. And, so to get a, a, you know, the classic Saturday morning cartoon lineup um, for me was just like, um, it, it was such like a, I don't know, not a feather in my cap, but it was more like a, okay, this is happening, you know, and um, thank God I got better at, at, at the voices because I, oh, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you hear the acting, it's like, whoo, so, okay, thank God I got hired for a second season, you know, that was, uh um but yeah. you know once again it's like it's just the learning curve right you just learn how to do things better just by doing it right and so definitely um you know so but it really did it really changed it changed a lot for me in terms of being able to be connected with say this you know this scene up and down the west coast right like it you know it soon led to a couple movies where you know my i got my visas to then work in the states and and it was just a you know, once again, this every every time I'd be like, oh, man, all right, I made a good choice. Way to go, you know? Um, you know, so, That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. So, awesome. we, so we've kind of alluded to the turtles a lot in our conversation so far. Turtles. But, but let's talk about how you got Raphael in the movie and then in the series. And sure. Before um, we... Before we do that, what was your familiarity with the franchise? Can we get ready? Well, that's a good question because that again, I wasn't a big sort of like um, industry person or whatever. I mean, yeah, I knew, you know, I I think I you know I'd seen um, what do you call it commercials for the for the turtles, right? But, but I was a little too old for those like those ones in in those years, right? So I knew they were popular. I had no idea how popular, <laughs> um, but it was probably a good thing because, you know, all I needed to do was concentrate on getting the gig 
um, when I got the audition, because, you know, again, as an actor, it's, you can think about the end result, but you got to get the gig first, right? So, um, so they gave me these lines from the very first movie, um, where the scene where him and um, Casey um, are going, you know, blow to blow with like a, mm. uh, you know, with Jose Canseco bat and all that. Yeah, it was brilliant because they 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 had me learn that that scene verbatim, right? So because they said when I did the audition, they wanted to see if I could mimic the other guy who'd been Raphael in the in the second one, um, and and that eventually then I would be covered in you know all this turtle gack, right? So I would be blind, deaf, and dumb. Apparently was the note. So they said, come in. Be animated, be like you're in a kabuki theater, you know, whatever thing. And and um, thank God I, I watched that that scene um a billion times, so I knew every single nuance and you know way that you know Raph was inside the suit and Turtles number one, you know, and and it was it was brilliant because then the act um I I guess I did a good job um uh, but also I have an athletic background, so I uh, um I mean I technically I couldn't do a backflip in that moment. But they asked me if I could, and I'm not gonna lie. But I was like, okay, I want to get the job. So because I did the did the scene, and then they're like, um, uh, the uh, the producer, oh, what was his name? David Chow. I think his name was David Chow. He's like, oh, can you do a backflip? A, a back a backflip. And I was, I think he said backflip. I was like, and so I didn't want to say yes, and then do it, and then fall on my head, and you know, break break myself. But I was like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 guys, I totally can. Um, I'm I'm practicing a new move right now. Can I show it to you? Right. And so again, I'm thinking like, okay, I can't do technically a backflip, but I could do a, I could do a round off that's sideways that kind of would look cool, hopefully in this room. And so I took a chance on it. And uh, you know, I'm like, watch out, fellas, <laughs> you know, this one might hurt, right? So, um, you know, I played it up, and and uh, you know that that running round off into a you know like a yeah, and then into like a you know like raft pose, um, that scored me the the gig. So, uh, you know, so it was you know because it was the truth enough to say that I could do it if I just had given the chance to be able to do it. So then you know when when I got the gig, um, I got paired up with um, Shashir Inakalia, who is um, Michelangelo's. Um, uh, stunt, um, uh, martial story, martial arts turtle. Oh, and cool. he happened to live, um, uh, you know, in a town next door to me. So it was great. So they paired him and I together. And so he basically kicked the crap out of me for six months. <laughs> <'Cause> he's, <laughs> like, he's an eighth degree black belt master in our niece. So, um, yeah. so it was great. So he, you know, he taught me sort of like all the best moves to be able to, you know, sell a, a kick and a punch and you know and actually be mm. able to take a punch you know and take a kick or a side of the head i mean my i think my my jaw's finally healed you know after like 30 years you know so um, <laughs> wow but it, was, it was awesome right because it you know it allowed me to sort of love this 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 body that i love yeah. doing that 30 and, 30 years ago probably last summer right 30 you know, years like, ago holy crap it's a long time <laughs> oh I mean, I haven't changed a bit, have I? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's amazing though. It's these these little snapshots in time, you know. It's uh, um, oh, and I got a actually a little um, turtle funny thing, where say yes, we you know we got the gig right. We're down in in Astoria, Oregon. Um, that's where we filmed it. And one day on set and again this was again um where i'm still the actor that just loved going to work every single day i had no mm -hmm. idea how popular the turtles franchises really were um until like that on filming there'd be days where like it was literally like fan visit the set day and so like we'd have lineups of kids with their parents losing their mind in excitement right of going mm -hmm. <laughs> there's the turtles right and you know <laughs> between scenes or whatever um mm -hmm. it was because no like i'd be literally i'd be almost dying from heat because it was so hot um and we wouldn't be able to say take our heads off because it was not enough time between between scene setups so they'd often just open the mouth to you know blow a little bit of cold air in there but there would often be fans so and i would only know that anybody was near me because i'd hear noel in my in my headpiece right going like uh, you know, uh, Maddie, uh, 
uh, two kids on your left and your right, uh, and mom and dad, they're going to sit down or whatever, right? So I, so literally, we'd hold the pose. So I just, I put my arms out like this, totally, like it was like this, <laughs> like blind. And then you'd feel these human beings beside you. And Noel would tell me in my ear, you know, mom, dad, you know, kid on my lap, you know, so like don't shift or fart. You know, or, can I say fart, sir? Um <laughs> But but it was but it was brilliant because we had all these fan interactions while we were filming because the I'm so grateful the producers did this because it allowed the the true fans of the work to come in and you know have a pick with with Raphael and the turtles and all these guys right uh -huh. um, this one little girl I'll get to, I'll, I swear I'll get to the point is this one little girl was on my lap and I remember Noel saying you know mom and dad want to say that you know she's like she's just turned one. Um, and, uh, you know, they're huge fans, whatever. And, um, so then now fast forward 20 plus years and we were running through Astoria on our run for one planet tour, right? Mm -hmm. We ran into the same town in Astoria, which we ended up being at a high school. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm busting in Raph, right? Going, what's the planet with Raphael and, you know, and, you know, and, Ed, and all this. And I literally see this this lady on the side of the thing just go like, and I, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, well, she like did. She like, you know, Raphael or whatever. Little did I know she found me the second that we finished our presentation, right? So it's like 20 plus years later, she goes, oh my God, you were Raph. This was us. She showed me a picture of her and her husband and this one-year-old daughter sitting on my lap for God's sakes who's now, and then she showed me another picture of that daughter who's now 21 and away at college, right? Wow. So oh, was, oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah, oh, like, you know, totally like this terrible. illusion of just like, what? <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, right? So, you know, hugs all around. And it, was, uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. I've never forgot yes. that moment. You know? Oh my so, gosh, that is, that is yeah. wonderful. You know? so, like, so in many ways, fellas, it was another two confirmations of a, of that I'm so grateful I got to do this life and, and this career. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, you know, running for, for, you know, for a better planet as well. And then mm -hmm. having the ability to connect with people that way. And then the gift then 21 years later, or in two ways, being a turtle. And then the fact that I was a turtle then now allowed me to talk to these kids again 21 years later. And, you know... <laughs> the teacher and the kids and her mom and their it's amazing yeah so yeah hey that's a cool emoji <laughs> thank you <laughs> can i have a cool one like that how do you make them <laughs> you have to buy those <laughs> yeah it's like hey kids shut up right <laughs> shut up ed you just gotta you gotta be cooler and then we'll you know you can make one yourself maybe <laughs> oh yeah and uh and hosting a podcast yeah exactly yeah well, <laughs> that would be, that would be scary guys i wouldn't yeah. be able to if i if something went wrong after i pressed the red button like for you know like record i'd be so screwed because you know i am technically challenged in many ways so you know so, yeah. so i'll try to say thank you for choosing to be podcast superstars because um you know you guys are great interviewers and the technical side of it thank you of course <laughs> yeah of course of course you got your back yes for thank sure. you appreciate sure. that thank yes. you <laughs> well it's just like you know it's funny that was like you said i got my back you said we got your back is that what you said yeah okay just like noel had my back and literally when we were running into walls I, it's like it's one of the first things i actually ever remember hearing in my headset from noel because this was like 1992 technology let's not forget right so the earpiece i could barely hear the motors and the servos inside my head was more like, you know, and then I'd hear this like, like gingerly through all the static. I'd hear this, Matt, Matt, look, go left. I'd hear it was Noel, right? Going like, Matt, left, go to left. And literally, and then you hear, Matt, stop. And then uh, right into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. You know, it was like, you know, now it's probably a lot easier, hopefully. <laughs> oh my gosh! Definitely. Yes. So, along so, along with voiceover, you've done a number of on camera acting roles. Are there any on camera projects you've been in the stick out as your favorites? Oh yeah, I loved. Um, 
for for many reasons, um, one of my childhood greatest crushes was uh, a lady named the Bionic Woman, who was Lindsay Wagner. Oh, did, you guys, yeah. did you guys ever yeah. watch that show? I did. So yeah, I had such a crush on her when I was a kid, and uh, I got to do a movie with her once where I was playing her. We were like doctors saving people from this food poisoning on, on a on a cruise ship. <laughs> so, but we hung out for like three months, and you know, it was it was like you know, every day I'm like. I had such a big crush on you when I was like, you know, seven. <laughs> and, you know, she's just such a nice lady. So that was good. And then uh, probably my one of my favorites was definitely, well, obviously Ninja Turtles, but uh, um, being able to be Jackie Chan's um, deputy on a, on a movie called Shanghai Nights um, <clears throat> was still probably one of my favorite, you know, places to be because we were shooting out on a location, um, you know, on a ranch. Um, and uh, and then just like getting to work with like this incredible guy, you know, that Jackie Chan is, right? He's, uh, you know, English was very much a second language for him at that time as well, right? When when Shanghai was filmed, I guess that was like 2003, I guess. Or what, I don't know, I guess, it's in that time, two, three, four, five, somewhere around there. Um, but it was, it was such an homage to like, to the business. Cause again, I got hired to be his deputy. So, you know, it was so much fun playing these scenes back and forth together. Um, and, and it was just, um, you know, like, like a crew member came up to me one day after, I guess we'd been there a couple of days doing our thing. And, uh, you know, and he's like, Hey, I've been watching you go toe to toe with the legend. And, you know, and, uh, I'm like, thanks dude. I'm having so much fun. And he's like, you know, it's like, no, for real. It's like, you know, you're, you and him, man. It's like, you know, like you're doing a good job. Essentially is what he was saying. Right. And uh, um, I, I never forgot that because, you know, crew members have seen it all. Right. So, you know, directors have to say, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah good job. Even if you stink. Right. <laughs> you know, but it, it's nice that, you know, when a crew member goes like, you know, I'm watching you and you're doing a good job. So I'm um, so like, thank you very much friend. <laughs> definitely so <laughs> now besides you know your work as an actor you founded the uh run coaching company on the run vancouver can you kind yeah. of uh talk about what that is and how it kind of first came into play yeah well it's this thing called running that i like to do <laughs> a lot and um yeah so it was you know it's it's kind of like a lot of the other stuff i i i love is it adds to what i already love doing which is running and <laughs> swimming and biking doing triathlons and and so um it was a way when we got back from run for one planet um you know at the time i thought uh, it might be a really great way to you know continue to fuel the fuel the business of you know teaching people how to run and be healthier inside themselves and stuff so yeah i did that for a few years and then um yeah nice. and, and then lately it's been more just um you know just staying active in my own in my own runs and um, and oh, actually, I forgot. Oh my God! Um, during COVID, um, I ran ten thousand kilometers across Canada, but I did it all here locally in in Vancouver. Because um, when you know when COVID arrived, as as you know, we couldn't go anywhere, right? So, mm -hmm. um, right. right. Uh, so I'd already planned on running across Canada again. So I thought, okay, well, hmm, I can't I can't actually go because I'll get busted at the border. Um, so I just said, okay, well, I can still start and just do it. So. Um, so for over two years, I, I ran like basically 21 kilometers out. I'm back why you weren't returning my calls. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> were you trying to phone? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, was, it, was, it was such a cool way to go because it's weird. Like even talking about it, sometimes I forget. And then I was like, oh, my God. Actually, right, yeah. <laughs> like I ran from Vancouver all the way to like clear across the other side of my country, which is 10,000 K long. Right. So, well, I did it the long <laughs> way this time. I decided to do it the long way. So that's that hence the 10,000 K. So, you know, but, but it all happened between this little, you know, so if you stack it up high, it's, you know, it's, it's like 10,000 feet high. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yes. So you also done some work as a race announcer. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, this, these beautiful, um, these be beautiful events that I get to be a part of, um, you know, for many years as an athlete, um, it, it was the same way. It was being able to share my voice in a different way 
because it also yeah, added to absolutely. the things that I love doing anyhow, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have some really great friends um, in that industry um, who have, you know, called me across my, my nine Ironman finishes and then all these marathons. Um, and then one day, literally, one of their teammates, you know, didn't wasn't able to participate because they were they couldn't get to where we were. Um, and yeah. they literally pulled me in. They're like, Matt, here's your chat. Get in. Come here. Here's the mic. Start talking. <laughs> right. So I'm like, mm. oh, my God, you guys are doing so great. And it was thankfully it was a kid's <laughs> race. Right. So, you know, these little kids were just like, who's that weird guy that's yelling at me right now? You know? <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so then it's, then it's been, you know, just an incredible, like, you know, bunch of years, you know, every, every summer and spring and it's actually just starting up again. So it's just awesome. So, um, you know, it's nice to be able to keep sharing my voices and it's so funny guys, because even doing say like the race announcing and that's where I give it mm -hmm. a, a lot of credit to a, a few of my friends. Cause I'm, I'm not one to, I don't self promote that way. Like I, you know, like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get on the mic and go, you know, Hey kids, I'm Raphael or, you know, or Hey, yo, 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 you guys, you know, you're crossing the finish line. Um, it's my, my co announcer. Um, one of my best friends, Steve King, who's like, like a world-class announcer, racer, extraordinary. The guy's incredible. Um, but he always goes, hey, kids, did you know that my friend here, Matt Hill, he's also the voice of Raphael and, you know, Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie and, you know, the Care Bears. And so then the kids, right, they look at you and they're like, him, yeah, right? And then you bust into the voice and it's like, yeah, you sparkly kidlets. Hey, you know, you're all number one. And, and it just kind of allows that, you know, that entry into then – bringing these characters that are authentic for for me because they're the mm -hmm. characters that i got hired to play right you know so like even on our even on our run around north america i swear to god guys it, it was the answer to connecting was so close but i couldn't see it because i didn't want to hood with i didn't want to hoodwink the kids with you know coming in in my eyes giving them voices before i'd sort of earned that respect by running there Mm -hmm. But well, thankfully, my partner Steph and we, you know, and a, and a a middle school event we were doing that we were sucking so bad because the you know the kids after the initial like, oh my god, you guys ran here from like over there, right? You know, and then middle school kids, we all were middle school kids at one point. Remember, right? If right. you know, if the guy, if the guy or gal that are speaking to us are cool, we we laugh, we think they're awesome, but if we don't. We think they suck, right? And uh, we just sit it, there and we go all mute. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll never forget it because you know, stuff's like we got to use the characters, and I'm like, no, I don't want them to know I'm Raphael and Ed and blah blah blah. <laughs> so this one, but this this school and this literally was perfect. This kid's like, like it's probably less than 15 minutes into the event, and this kid's like, boring, right? And <laughs> It's like a pin drop, right? You could see the teachers going like, I'll kill you. <laughs> and and, and I, I'll never forget it because Steph, my partner, looked at and she goes, you got to, like, essentially saying, come on, Ed, Raph, whatever. And so, like, literally, I'm just like, oh, good. I was like, yo, 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 you know, Saskatchewan Middle School, you little peeps and peep bats who want to save the planet with Ed and Raph, y'all, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this kid went from, like, too cool for school to like when they when they actually connected with it because you could literally see them go like that guy sounded like that guy well like, what you know and then like that you know and i'm like yeah and i'm ed too you little you know you you little patootie and and then you know you and then these kids went from like wanting to eat you alive <laughs> to then going oh my god sign my arm sign my god this is you know <laughs> We'll do anything just you know so it is awesome it was so awesome oh, oh yes definitely so, the power of cartoons fellas and movies yes. oh yes and films Ab absolutely right? because, the feds, people say that films films nice <laughs> because pop culture can shape anybody in any way because you don't know how they were brought up and you don't know the direct mm -hmm. impact that it could have yeah. absolutely oh yes. yeah no, it's true. You know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, that, you know, and I think that's where um, it's, we're in a very interesting times right now because I think the like pop cultures is always going to be there. Right. 
Oh yes. Oh yeah. Where, where, it's, where it's interesting, say with like you know like like say influencers and influencers right now, I mm-hmm. think sometimes they have this they, you know like if their TikTok video goes viral, they're instant like billionaires and 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 they're they're then given this platform that you know they may or may not be ready to be able to utilize what it is that they're being now offered by having you know billions of people go. I'll do anything you want, you know, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I guess that's technology though, too, isn't it? It's, you know, it's no different than this, right? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. In the olden days, we'd have to write each other letters and then go like, okay, here, I'll mail it to you. And then now uh, what's your question? Okay. Now, I'll, and it'll, you know, this interview would take like 16 weeks. <laughs> to mail <laughs> I owe every, back I'm, I'm, I owe everything to Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, you guys, I'm so old that like, um, you know, the first Captain Nintendo records, we did it to tape that. And so literally that's how they edited it. They'd slice the tape and then they'd put it together and they'd stretch it and put it, you know, it's just like, you know, that's how it was done. Right? Yeah. yeah definitely. We've come so far. We've come so far. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Big kind of, absolutely. But, then, but what is old is, is new again, right? It's like, you know, mm-hmm. like records went out of style and then cds came in and then all this other stuff and then yeah, i i collect all that stuff so it's never really been it's out of style for me <laughs> well but you know but like vinyl stuff's being re-released because it's being i put know out. Yeah, yeah it's crazy it's a much yeah. better sound in my opinion you know i yeah. like that, that don't deep you know, scratchy don't sound you. So oh, it's had the needle like, that was a bit bent too. <laughs> I remember when I first got a record player, I broke the needle, and my mom like freaked out at me. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Yeah, it's like Bob. That's the diamond cut needle. You're thinking like that's a diamond on there. Holy crap! <laughs> 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 you're, you're, you're trying to steal it so you can like sell it at Seven Eleven for some like milk money or something, you know, or chocolate bar. <laughs> I mean, sorry, that was my childhood, but that's just me. Right. So, so you've done a lot of like community outreach and charity stuff what is it like you know being able to use your voice and use your work as an outlet to you know impact others yeah well it's you know i think it all for me um it's it's giving back more than what you get sometimes right and so for me, it's always felt like, okay, wow, I've been blessed to have this career that reaches a lot of people in my version of, say, being popular with a lot of, you know, a lot of young people, let's say, um, or with, say, brands that people recognize, um, you know, with these franchises and stuff. I've, I've always felt that, um, you know, especially when we went out on our run around North America, with run for one planet um that was for me that was the biggest outreach to go like you know hey you guys um you know yeah we ran here to get to your school but you know you're just as powerful as i am and your your life matters as well and your dreams matter um and so it it was it's just such a like i feel so honored that people still keep calling right to go like hey would you come and talk mm-hmm. to us you know come talk to us about this or um, you know, all these different ways that I've been able to share my voice. Um, and, and that's why I say thanks, fellas, because like even just yeah. asking about like say the race announcing, it's another avenue of of ways that I get to do it that way, right? And you know, yeah. and so I, my you know, my charitable giving is just part of where I've always felt like that's that's our duty as as human beings, right? We share with others. Yes. Right. And um, you know, I mean it's interesting because I, you know, that's more where I even look forward to the more money I earn in my career and in my books that are hopefully going to, you know, reach a lot of people as well. Um, and then in my talks that I give, I hope then the more I make, I, the more I can even up my percentage of my giving, because for me, that really is what it's all about. It's like lifting others up that, you know, may need more help. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I think especially in this time, you know, so um, it's yeah. So thanks for asking, man. Yeah, of course. Of course. So 
Now, as an actor, what are some of the key things you've taken or learned the most? Ah, uh, that um, the power of the human spirit is alive and well and thriving, and um, as well as the superhero that lives inside all of us. It really it it's the truth of life, right? It is the universal yes. connection point, right? It's um, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have one without the other, right? It's like right. that. It's like. <laughs> You know, actually, in the, the last four, this last few years, where you know, say I auditioned to a, a, a lot of, you know, like my, my wall back there because that's my studio. Um, if I don't oh, get nice. a gig from the MP3 recording, it's like acting by myself, right? And so it's like, <laughs> all right, good job, man, you rocked that out of the park, right? And then you know, <laughs> you don't get the job, you don't get, you, you don't get a call, right? Um, but then the instant you get the call to then be back with people doing this craft it's the same thing it's you know it's that instant feedback loop of you know of going all right keep choosing man keep choosing keep sharing keep you know lighting your fire do what, what you feel is your calling here on this earth because you know um you know i mean i'm old enough obviously i mean i'm 55 now um mm -hmm. and at the same time i i i still believe that 13 year old in me that said Hey, maybe I can make this, you know, make a go of this acting thing, you know. And then even earlier than that, you know, when I was just like this young kid, you know, touching the holly bush tree in our back lane, going, you know, like I want to go to Hollywood. Ouch. Okay, I want to go to Hollywood. You know, <laughs> my brother riding by on his bike, going, "What are you doing, dork?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, but it's but it all comes full circle, right? You know, and so yes. you know, like I say, it's. Uh, Never, never not think that your the power of your dream is just as important as everyone else's. And I think it's Absolutely. our job to to also. I, oh, sorry, because was the question specifically what's one big thing I've learned around that? Yeah. Okay. Well, here's another that I think I've learned is don't ever not um, have the courage to share with yourself, obviously first, what your dreams are. You know, waking you up at night to say like, hey what about this? This has been your whisper for a long time. And then having the courage to share that with one other person could change your life. Cause you never know who that person might be or who that person might go. What you, you know, it's like, look at this. It's like, you mm -hmm. guys have this idea for a podcast. You shared it with someone else, right? You're like, I'll get on board. Yeah. I'd love to get on board too. It's, it's like, you know, like when I was, originally thinking of you know when run for one planet i call it like my downloads from twenty seven thousand feet because i was on my way to an animation convention in detroit in detroit um and literally i got these answers to then what ended up becoming run for one planet um which was our run around north america but it was literally on that flight where you know i heard my i got basically got called to the to the journey right of going like you know like i honestly felt like i was a bit possessed in that moment because this voice inside me was going sit down Matt Hill because these answers you've been asking on how to inspire the world through your running and your character voices and everything you love about this planet you're going to get the answers on this five-hour flight to Detroit Michigan so like sit down young man put your seatbelt on because it's going to change your life and you know and and I literally was like mm -hmm. Oh my God, what did I eat in my sandwiches? I've been drugged, right? And stuff. But these were the truths of these questions I'd been asking of myself since I was 10 years old, you know? So I'm so grateful I was on that plane that day because it literally was then, you know, five hours worth of scribbling and being excited, right? It's essentially, it's like your guy's show notes, right? When you were first starting your podcast, right? It's like, Oh my God, we can have this person on. Oh my God, maybe we can have that person. Okay, we maybe we can do this, right? Oh yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's right. Because you know the dream lands, and you and it's like, oh my God, I it's mean, on, on, right? On a separate on a separate note, I've been doing my podcast for thirteen years. When, see, that's when, the, that's it, Bob. Right? Yeah, it's he's like, been he's been doing podcasts since before podcasts were really like a huge yeah, thing. I was just gonna say, it's just like, yes. whoa! Did you invent the word podcast, Bob? <laughs> everybody, you know, everybody, everybody asks me that. <laughs> Oh my god. You know, usually people say to me, it's like, man, you're old, but man, Bob, you're old. That's like, no, nah, it's just like, you know, 
But the yeah, um, I'm yeah, but, but 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 the thing is, right? It's it's don't be afraid to share your dreams with others because we seriously exactly. have no idea where our life. And might honestly, be. honestly, it, because of my disability, by default, I was afraid yep. to yep let that out there because there are vocal ticks and there are you know things that the normal listening audience doesn't hear. But then I sat there and said, you know what, that that could make it different. They're not used to hearing it until they're going to latch onto it uh, deeper. Yep. Oh, 100%, man. And, and it's like, thanks for sharing that, Bob, because that's the truth of the journey, right? It's like, and then look from your, if you if you would just like shut that down, going like, oh, God, nobody's going to listen to me. No, they're, you know. But there was a voice inside you that went like, "No, you know." What? And I and I never used to want to. I never used to want to talk about my disability on the podcast either. And then yeah. once I started to, the interviews would get flipped, and then they would ask me questions, and that's why I'm so looking forward to having you on my yeah. podcast because you know we've we've had this time here and time as well before, so. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me on too. To get yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. Absolutely. Group hug. High fives. Well, well done, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But it's true, right? We all have this journey called life, so it's like, okay, like, do it. It's like you know. Um, yes. I mean, you know, sometimes the higher we reach, the the more challenges we have sometimes. But I think Bob, I think you nailed it perfectly because. Your challenge was to set yourself free to go, you know what? Yeah, I am going to talk to people and people are going to get it or, or like that. Even if they didn't understand, they go, can you just re-say that for a second? You'd be like, sure. Right. And and then they end up interviewing you because you're the inspiring one. It's not right. about them, right? It's not about me. It's not about, it's not, it's. You yeah, know, it's, and, it's, and it's really, it's really surreal for me because these guys listened to me and they they loved what I did and then I'm yeah. helping them out with their they're yeah. on one hundred something episodes now and I'm like the proud dad. <laughs> like, like, yeah, we just heard our one hundredth <laughs> interview yes. yesterday. <laughs> yes. Nice job, gentlemen. Well done. Well, thank you, know. you so much. Well, thank you. you thank know. you. It means hey, Bob. a lot. Bob's like more like he's not like the godfather. Right? He's just like, yeah, hey, <laughs> kids. Let's see. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah thanks guys what an yeah, honor absolutely. to be here with you what absolutely other, you got another question yeah we're, we we're, we're 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 about we're about to wrap up oh okay we're just yeah. asking like the last few yeah yeah yeah. no worries yeah so what are you working on currently what's been going on yeah well the uh, current project um after my ten thousand k was to finish my book, which is my first offering of um, at the halfway point of my life being, well, I started writing it when I was 51, um, well, 52, because I want to be 104 when I leave this planet if I'm gifted with that many candles. Um, so at 52, I was like, well, I better write my half, you know, my halfway point life story to this point. So um, I'm just about finished it. Um, and uh, I'm in the final big edit um, of the journey. And so I've got... Uh, yeah, I mean it's uh it's it, it's called My Animated Life. Stories from being a voice for change. So uh it encapsulates my life in running, my life for you know, in acting and being a voice guy as well as uh, you know, and then my love of this planet and the big journey that Run for One Planet was. And uh um and so yeah, so it's uh, essentially that's that's probably my biggest current right now. Um because I'm actually quite, I feel very fortunate because right now I actually don't have a, a big gig schedule um, taking me different places. So it's actually perfect because I can just like, you know, sort of lock myself away and find a sunny spot on the patio and, um, you know, finish this draft. So so my goal is that it'll be um, launched and published into the world um, by the end of the summer. Nice. So stay nice. tuned. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to, looking forward to awesome. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. It's gonna be neat to actually, you know, like, like, right, the end. <laughs> you know, 
his voice is something like, finally, he got there. <laughs> and then you'll go, what do we do now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Totally. You know what's hilarious? That question, when we were on Run for One Planet, we so we were around, right, North America for the year. Yeah. When we got to the coast of California, so we still had 1,500 miles we had to run, and it was going to still take three months to get here, right, to finish our journey. And that was what it reminded me. It was one of the first pe- people that asked a question in San Diego. They're like, so, wow, that's awesome, guys. So what are you going to do next? Right. And uh, I, I thought <laughs> yeah. that was really funny because I was just like, um, let me, I'll get right back to you. We still have a lot of running still left to do. I know we're getting close, but you know, it's a, uh, but that's our human, yeah. that's our human. Like, I think we're just excited for people. Right. So, you know, it's <laughs> like, you know, like when's your next podcast? When's your next, you know, it's awesome. So <laughs> definitely. Yes, for sure. Tell so, me, Jerry. That's cool. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it. So <laughs> awesome. So are there any words which like, would you like to say to those who are watching or listening who have been supported your work, especially at and any over the years? Uh, yeah. Uh, as I, it's funny, as I, as I used to say, um, at the end of our school presentations, um, and then also then now, you know, since I've been back from the tour and then all the, different speaking engagements I get to do. Um, it's still the same thing saying um, from my feet, uh, through my heart, through my mouth part. Um, thank you very much for um, sharing uh, such goodness with me um, and this journey, you know, of my life of what I've chosen to do in the world. And, um, you know, I think it's yes. uh, to me, it's, it's like this, it's like, it's the most important thing to be able to share. Right. And so, um, you know, I feel very honored that you guys would ask questions, you know, and, and, and ask Absolutely. Questions. of course. So, uh, um, it's a big deal to me. And so thank you. And, uh, you know, yes, Pleasure. everyone else that's Pleasure. listening out there, it's the same thing, right? It's like, you know, like look at the, look in the mirror and go like, I am freaking amazing. I am the most incredible creature in the world. <laughs> you know, I have more talent yeah. than the sun, you know, cause that's the truth, right? It's like, yes. you know, I don't think it's, I don't think in this new age, I don't think there's any time to be humble. It's now about, and it doesn't mean being verbose or egotistical. It's more going, I'm going to shine my light because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the best I can be in this life. That's exactly. Empowering and all that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Def- you know? And, you know, and when you like, and when you reach high to like jump over a new barrier or if, you know, whatever, for me, it's running and all the other stuff, you know, yeah, you're going to hit a face plant every once in a while. That's just life, right? Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, you know, make sure no broken bones or anything like that. And, you know, and, and, you know, make sure you have a, a, a strong support system of love around you. Right. Cause you know, yes. those other humans or dogs or cats and, you know, things like that will be like, it's okay. You can keep going. Come on. I'll be here for you. You know, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so if, uh, if people would like to connect with you, what, what's yes. the best place for people to reach you? Um, probably through my website. Um, so yeah, Matt dash hill.com. It's like the, you know, the hyphen in the middle. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Matt, hill, Matt dash hill.com. Just like contact me, send me a note. Um, Facebook. Um, I can't even tell you what my Facebook, um, password i have no idea like that technical stuff but if you if you friend me on facebook it's the one it's the matt hill that has uh yellow running shoes on and i'm pointing at a thing saying i love it here <laughs> so that's and that's my ode to being alive and being love this planet so um, that's that's it right there yes and to everyone watching or listening link to uh matt's website will be in the description down below Oh, beautiful yeah yes. yeah yes. i mean I'd say, I'd say twitter and instagram but i'm so bad on that like i'm not even but but yeah. you know i promise i'll try to figure it out but twitter still confuses me i can't seem to log in <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> but, and, and so the the very last uh question that jake's about to ask is the question that we ask all of our guests at the end of each interview yes yes, yes we surely do so of course like up to you there, jake Can you see it? okay there you go, Jake. Okay. <laughs> Jake's like, if you would shut up, I could ask you a <laughs> stupid question. <laughs> I, would, I would never do that. 
<laughs> so Bob would Bob Bob used to say like, all right, all right, shut up, stop, <laughs> dude. I know my friend. <laughs> Actually, sorry, that was Noel that warned Bob saying. Matt will talk a lot. Just know when to just gently go like, Ralph, move on, move on. You done yet? You done. That, sounds very, that sounds very Noel. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I wish we could phone him right now. That's like... I was going to try to set that up too. Oh, he's... Because I, I just got his book. So it's like, I'm just like, oh, I'm so stoked to read it. So, you know, um, but then, you know, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's someone else's question time. <laughs> Dig take of course it. I'm not like that. Hold, so. your, com- hold your comments, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you know, to end this off, you know, of course, you know, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or, how, or we say in your own words, how would you find define the word nostalgia? Well, I think once again, it goes back to Ed uh, going like, wow, no, no, what's that nostalgic nostalgia guy? Uh, it's a very, it's a good thing because it's like buttered toast that we love. Uh, it's like your favorite gravy. It's maybe your favorite episode or episodic of your uh, TV show or your or podcast. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm that old dude that, you know, Raphael would be like, hey, yo, nostalgia is a good thing, man. It rocks. You know, it's, uh, yes. yeah, I think it's, that's what I think of nostalgia. And then you'd be like, that wasn't the question. <laughs> I just like, you know, you're like, we asked you about your favorite, you know, butter toast. And I was like, yeah, let's talk about nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Great words to end off. Yes. I hope I passed the audition, fellas. Thank you. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll edit this part out. Um, Bob, if you want to have your webcam off for this or on or whatever, it's fine. But um, I guess we can post for our photo now. Oh, yeah. I'm coming. Oh, yeah. I'll give my camera work this time. Yeah, I, get it, I have a DVD yeah. of like Ed, Ed and Eddie and a bunch of the other Cartoon Network shows, but I can't seem to find it, but it's fine. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks for, you know, thanks for, thanks for purchasing, guys. Thanks for watching. They, they just released yes, the of course. They just released the complete series on DVD. That's right. I'm going to have to pick that up. That's right, because didn't um Disney Plus pick it up or something? or, or HBO or, or, Max, or, 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 I think. That's it. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yes, and thank you, thank you, uh, Matt, for being a guest on the podcast. This was so yes, th- yes, thank you so much, and thank we you def- so much. We definitely for... gotta, we definitely gotta keep in touch. Definitely, fellas. Yeah, yes, we so. we got we we got to link up to what is your availability within the in, within the next month? Are you good to record something or what? Hundred percent, man. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. I'm I'm um I'm in the process of moving right now, but I can also always find an hour. Um, that's why I was. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit late Rod, this morning because I was just typically, my, typically my conversations here like an hour, an hour fifteen, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Works for me, man. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what email I have for you before you go, and I want to see if you get it. Okay, that that part of the problem. Uh, it's the one. It's the Matt Matt Hill one hundred four at gmail dot com. It's that one. Cause I think Noel got a hint touch too. Like, oh yeah, you're right actually. And yeah. then you met with my old editor, and I damn remember that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That was like three years ago. That was a while ago, wasn't it? That was before okay. COVID. Yeah, like four or five years ago. Was it? it was definitely in the last decade. I know that. Cause but, I've yeah. known I've known Noel for like thirteen years. Oh yeah, man, he's a he's an incredible, incredible human being. He was he was the first he was the first person that in children's television or any animation, any of those worlds that I ever interviewed. Yep. Oh yeah, no, he's uh he's one of the good ones, as you know, right? It's like you know, like some people, you know, you might ask them and they just don't even bother getting back to you. So we get Matt Hill one hundred four at gmail dot com. That's it. I'm going to email you now. Shoot me an email, man. <laughs> well, well, uh, get it. Well, we well, in the, well, in the meantime, yeah. so we'll just finish off the recording and then we can 
talk about whatever we have to talk about with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While we're off the air. But yeah. um, anyway, yeah. So the, this is this has been a wonderful interview, and to all of yes. our viewers and listeners. Yes. yes, and thank you so much for you, Don. Be a proud of our childhood to keep up with great work and see what's next for you, Matt. Yes, thanks, ex- fellas. yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly what Jake said. And to all of our viewers and listeners, thanks for tuning in to another wonderful episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. And of course, uh, Matt, we send you our we send you our love and hope you can be with us in the next yes. one. And yes. um, hundred percent, fellas. Yes. Oh, and congrats yes. on your hundred episodes. So look, you know, hundred times a hundred. You guys are Again, doing this you. until you're like a hundred. So you know, it's a good. It's a good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh so gosh, for sure. To all of our to all of our fans, remember as always to keep nostalgia alive, and we'll see you next yes. time with more fun interviews. And thank you, Bob, for joining us. Of course, yes, thank you, Bob. Thank, thank you, Bob. our pal. Woo. This is a blast. Thanks, so much. Yes, bye, everybody. Thanks, Take care, everyone. See you next. See you next Take time. Care. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.